All right, we are getting ready to go live. And we are live on Facebook. Woo! Hey, Facebook family, how y'all doing out there? Listen, I always say I'm excited, but like, I'm really, really excited about this chat that we're about to have. So as we're getting ready, like I always say, I want y'all to share the live, okay? Stop sitting there just watching this. You need to share it with the people. Share the live, feel free to comment um, all the things that you would like to talk about or questions that you might have for our lovely guest today. Listen, every time I get on here, I'm like, I'm really excited about this guest, but y'all, I'm super excited about this guest because this guest is booked and busy, okay? Every time <laughs> she is busy, she works hard, and I'm just so excited to have Miss Ebony King Alexander tonight. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for having me. But before we begin, as I always, you know, start, I want to thank every uh, supporter that has been pushing my vision and this mission of Girl You Can Do It Too. We have the lovely Ebony here that's going to share her journey on to getting her MBA. And it's just really important to see that there's someone who is doing it, who's done it before, and you know and have all the tools that you need to know that you can do it too. So let's get into her bio. So Ebony King Alexander is an enthusiastic, God-fearing woman who triumphantly survived the rough neighborhoods of the South Bronx to go on and become a college graduate, one of the first in her family, and complete her MBA in management. She's currently working for Rollins Inc. headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, and holds the role of IT help desk supervisor. She also serves on her company's philanthropic board, overseeing volunteer projects throughout the city of Atlanta. Ebony is a devout Christian and places high priority on her participation at her church, Christ United Church in Loganville, Georgia, where she serves as the director of worship and arts. And not only that, but she's an active and devoted member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, <laughs> a sisterhood she holds near and dear to her heart. And she is the lovely mother of the beautiful KJ. We love you, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> and Ebony has such a powerful story. And so I'm so excited. I know the audience is excited to hear from you today. So let's just give her a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, there's so many questions I want to ask, but first, can you talk us through your journey a bit? Um, from childhood to now. And I, I know that's might be a broad question, but just give us an overview about your journey. Sure, sure. Again, thank you for having me. Congratulations on this phenomenal platform to encourage women, young and old. So great job on that. Uh, as you said, it, it is vast. Um, and so I will ask you to steer me. Uh, okay. But, <laughs> okay, so my um, journey started out um, pretty rocky. Uh, was I am the youngest of three biological girls uh, yeah. that my mom had. And we grew up in the, the projects in, in the South Bronx. So it was um, trying, as you could imagine, um, any type of tenement or projects. Um, however, we, uh, we made it, I'm here. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's that part. <laughs> so um, my mom was not um, in our life for the majority of my childhood at all. We were raised by a grandmother, which happens um, um, a lot. Um, but then she passed away when I was 10. Wow. Uh, and so we were with my aunt, but we really just raised each other, especially my middle sister. I looked up to her and she guided me. So um, to fast forward, uh, because of life circumstances, mm -hmm. I did end up in foster care at the age of 15 going into 16 years old, just starting out at high school. Now, at this point, I my goals in life mm -hmm. were to get an apartment at, at, at some point in a job where I can sustain myself. Mm -hmm. Those were the extent of my goals. I didn't think about college. I wanted to just get out of high school because no one had finished high school yet wow. <laughs> uh, without a GED. So that was my goal. And mm -hmm. um, college, who, who's paying for that? I'm just trying to live. Can I live? Can I breathe? Can I? 
Um, right. And so how, how sad or tragic foster care could seem, mm -hmm. uh, it was the best thing that has ever happened to me. Wow. Um, yeah, I was with a phenomenal family <sighs> blessing. Uh, they were from Honduras. Mm -hmm. And um, a, uh, the Children's Aid Society was the name of the foster care agency. Um, and I joined the independent living program. And that is when I was introduced to the possibility of further or higher education. Mm -hmm. And so that's how that got started. I can continue, but I'll let you guide me. <laughs> wow. I didn't even know this story. And yeah. so starting from where you began to now, to see how you were able to navigate through those storms. Your life is literally, you're a walking testimony. That is, that is just powerful. So just continuing in that vein of choosing your career path. Sure. So what really pushed you to um, go to college yeah. and pursue an MBA? Because with the background that you have, right? Not having... Um, a person to show you how to do it, right? Um, not having a kind of a blueprint to do it, right? That wasn't even in your mind. What caused you to arrive to that point? Sure. Well, master's was not an option. College wasn't an option, but definitely but master's was not. <laughs> um, and so when I joined the independent living program, uh, they taught you um, how to cook, how to do a resume, uh, and how to apply for colleges. And so I told so them, thank you, but no, thank you. That's not an option for me. Can't afford it. Why? Um, and so my counselor, what she, she said something that stuck with me um, and propelled me. She says, listen, who cares if you got to take out a loan? If you're going to make an investment, mm. invest in, in your education in your life is the best investment that you can make. Wow. And just that told me that it gave me hope that maybe, maybe I can. They took me on college tours, literally. Like we went to North Carolina, not North Carolina Central University. We went to uh, Utica uh, up in Albany. We went to all these schools and mm -hmm. I saw, so I, so I saw, and mm -hmm. so that, that it was mm -hmm. tangible. Um, and so through that program, I was able to fill out Pell grants or, or I didn't know what that was. And they mm -hmm. allowed me to do that. And, um, I applied to SUNY New Paltz and I got accepted and that blew my mind. Why would anybody accept me? Like, what does that mean? And they accepted me. Um, so that's how I got into college, um, with the goal of what's the least I can do. <laughs> like, first of all, masters, I'm barely going to be able to pay for this. Okay. And I didn't think I was smart enough. Right. Mm. So I'm like, all right, let me just do that. And I was on a career path um, for to be an accountant because I did well. And my accountant high school teacher said, you're doing good. You, you got all A's. And so I'm like, OK, I'll do that. And you yeah. didn't need grad school. Wow. You just needed to wow. um, get a CPA. So that's the beginning of that journey. So is this is just powerful because I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. And, and as y'all know. Even though we know each other, I have never shared this stuff. Yeah, together. yeah. so, and what's, what's powerful to me is that even though um, you were in foster care, right, and certain things weren't tangible, there were people in your life that saw the ability in you and gave you the tools that you needed to foster that ability to go to college or go to university. And so for me, it's like, we really don't have an excuse. You know what I'm saying? We really don't have an excuse. So can you talk about not using your, your, your hardships and circumstances as almost like a crutch to, to stop you from pushing forward? Because I'm sure that there are moments where you felt like I don't have the support system that I need, right? I don't have this traditional family dynamic. And so here I am in foster care with a family that I'm not quite familiar with. This is a different surrounding. So how, what really was there to kind of push you forward to not use um, your circumstances as a crutch to not propel forward and not to push forward? Sure. Yeah. Um, it was, my circumstances is what, prop what propelled me, mm -hmm. right? 
it, I, it, this, this wasn't it. Mm-hmm. This was not it. Mm-hmm. So I needed to change my life somehow. Um, and so what do I do? One of the things that helped me to propel is because I had that, 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 that understanding or that revelation that this is not it and I need it better, mm. uh, which is the first step. Mm. Yes. Because if you don't believe that you can or should, even should, even if you don't believe you deserve it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but if you believe that you should, even if you don't think you can, mm. but if you think you should, that that even that is going to um uh, uh encourage you to seek it and, and and so i sought it and so i began to ask questions to um connect to people that i saw doing it mm-hmm. what did you do how how was that you know and having that conversation uh, um started to connect myself with people you know what i'm gonna be honest i ain't connect myself it was god because the people that were putting my <laughs> <laughs> the people that were put in my path, I didn't seek them. I didn't ask to be in foster care. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask for this counselor to, to encourage me to be, uh, to, to go to school. And then uh, when my foster parents moved to Virginia and I was 18 years old, my first year of college, mm-hmm. I was almost going to drop out because I don't have anybody. And then my mentor in that program decided and agreed that though she was newly married and pregnant to become a foster mother, to take me in. And to this day, she is my mother, Queen Queen Mama Lisa is what I call her. Yes. Um, Okay. And she, though it was rocky at the beginning, she was the one who encouraged me and pushed me even though I did not want to do it. So I believe it's, you have to have that something in you and just that little bit, people will see that and that energy will draw the help that you need. And that's that's so powerful because I always say that there's a spark can become a flame, right? Absolutely. And you have to have that drive, that passion for that one thing. And God will align it to where he will put people in place that can identify <laughs> the thing that you've been called to do. And oftentimes we kind of get in the way of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. there's people around you telling you like, hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. But because like you said, you don't think that you deserve it or you don't think that you should do it. You become a stumbling block. But from your story, what I'm hearing is that even when you felt like those moments were going to happen, you said, no, 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 I deserve this. I'm not my circumstance. And here's this mother Lisa who stands in the gap and is like, no, I don't care what you're saying right now. You're going to, you're going to do this. You don't have a choice. Yeah. You don't have a choice. And so it's sometimes it takes other people in our circle to see greatness in us. Yeah. So that we can believe that we're great and that we can do what we're ordained to do or what we're purposed to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. gosh. (laughs) So so you go to college, right? And what's powerful to me is that I, I, I know you personally, and I see just how committed of a person you are. You have so much drive and so much ambition. And I also see how you're able to foster that with KJ. And so can you just talk to us about that dynamic, right? So sure. being, being a single mom and being um, still passionate about your education. So going to college and doing all those things, can you just talk about that dynamic as well? Well, um, being a mom was not in the cards, right? So I shared a little bit about my history and uh, how I said, and if you remember, and if you don't rewind it, because I had said that I want to go ahead, get a job in an apartment. I ain't say I have a family. That was it. That was, that was, that was it. That was the cap. (laughs) <laughs> period um and because my upbringing was so hard mm. I couldn't imagine bringing somebody else in this world when I don't have anything to give you like I that's how I felt right like how can I protect what do I have to pour into you I don't I don't know how to do that so um uh when I got married mm-hmm. um and conceived on my wedding night 
houseway. Um, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, now, now I'm born again Christian. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so we can't do that other thing because like, right, great, right. Can I be a mom? How to do it? I don't know. I'm scared. I didn't have a mother. Mm-hmm. How to be a mom? So fast forward when I committed and said, you know what? Because you mentioned, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm black or white. I'm if I'm doing it, I am doing it all the way, all the way, yep. <laughs> all the way. So if I'm gonna be a mom, oh, I'm gonna be a mother. Mm-hmm. to the utmost and so what I began to do was to uh, intentionally uh, provide uh, all of the resources and everything to make this human this this little uh, brown boy successful mm-hmm. I poured into him I did research on how you know okay I have an, an, an infant what do you do now I have a school age child mm-hmm. right I'm going to give him everything that I did not have Mm-hmm. And that was that was my drive, and that continues to be my drive. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 though you know my marriage didn't work out, mm-hmm. um, that that didn't stop anything. You know, it was more of a drive. Like, all right, so I need to be an example to my son. If he's going to be success, if he's going to be successful, then he has to see success and know what it looks like. Now I really don't have a choice. I have to do well. I have to excel at everything that I do um, so that I can provide this example for my son. That is, mm, that is so powerful. And I mean, I see the fruits of your labor through KJ and how phenomenal of a young man he is. And oftentimes we always say you see the glory, but you don't know the story. Yes. Yes. You don't know what people have been through to get where they're getting. And I'm hearing your story and I'm like, <laughs> and I knew you said you. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like this is powerful that you were able to endure and push through and the drive that you have, we see where it comes from, right? And so you're a phenomenal mom, by the way. I'm just, oh, thank you. And I know this is the MBA edition, but I'm dropping it in there that like, you're you're phenomenal so and what I was able to see you do is you start school getting your MBA while also being a mom while also being in ministry and seeing you just navigate through that can you talk to us about first of all why did you decide to go get your MBA (laughs) you have a college degree and all of us like you you, you completed your list (laughs) right yeah Yeah. so you're a mom you're you're doing mom things you're working with your bachelor's. Yeah. Why an MBA? And yeah, why? I know, because like, what? Um, and not only that, why 20 years later? Yes, 20 years post. Can you speak under- to that, please? Absolutely. That? So, so um, after, uh, right after my undergrad, right after college, I started working immediately. Um, and I was with that company for 15 years. Right. And so after, you know, I, I did everything. I grew up with that company 15 years. I ain't going nowhere. This is it. Right. And then they lay off people 6,000 nationwide. I'm one of them. Wow. My world was rocked. Now at that point in my life, I had literally just got my, my apartment after my divorce. I stayed with my parents, my adoptive parents mm-hmm. for two years to get back on my feet. You know, I finally mm-hmm. got back on my feet with my kid. You know, I finally got him a place to stay with his own room. We were comfortable. I did it, Papa. Look, we're here. I know dad's not here, but we got this. Let's go. And I get laid off. Wow. And so I was laid off for a year and a half. Um, and to where I ran out of severance. So mind you, I just started over. And now I'm like, Oh my goodness. Uh, I was, and in that period, why an MBA in that season mm-hmm. of just being naive, because I'm like, I work for a fortune 500 company. I made all these Hello. connections. I did all this stuff. I could get a job lies. I came back into a, to, the, to the workforce that was unfamiliar to me. I didn't know how to do a resume. Uh, I thought I can print out resumes and go into, you know, place it. No, everything's online. I was lost. Mm-hmm. So I ended up going through my severance and then losing my apartment. Wow. And so um, again, God's provision in a village, my godmother said, absolutely. Now this is my godmother. Uh, she said, come on and took my, my son and I um, 
with her and what I had to do. At this time I was doing, I was working for Sprint as an um, account manager. So I was doing customer service, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? My undergrad was in um, uh, communications, video production with a business minor, right? Mm -hmm. So the job options aren't really that big, but I've been with this company. I'm good, I can yeah. do this. Mm -hmm. um, and so after getting laid off, and starting over and having to go back to the call center, making $13.50 an hour with a degree wow. um, and looking at this brown eyed boy looking up at me and we're in one room. What do I do? Yeah. So um, I just st stuck with that job and I mm -hmm. said, I got to go back to school because I need another path. I need mm -hmm. the, the experience didn't work for me. I need to build up my resume with education and I want to go into another field. And so in order to do that and not start at the start at the bottom, I need to go ahead and get my MBA. So that's what the decision, that's not true. I thought I need to go back to school. I didn't think I can get an MBA. I can tell you yeah. that story if you want to know that story. Yeah, but go I, ahead. You want me to? Okay, good. Okay. And so um, I made a decision. I, I, I had to do some self-reflect. Thing. Mm -hmm. You would imagine almost two years without a job and, and, and trying to figure out, well, if people don't want to hire me with my experience, what am I good at? Because I didn't want to do that job anymore anyway, but it's mm -hmm. what I've done. Mm -hmm. So I did some internal work and I decided that I wanted to go into human resources because uh, my skill set and my personality would flourish there. I'm great with uh, 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 giving guidance and sort of how to, you know, build a company and build management and all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to school for human resources. I was set. I was growing in my new company. And then after two years, they laid me off. Whoa. Oh, and I laughed because yes. this is no way this is happening. Right. This now. is not happening. This again. Is, it's absolutely no way. Like, are you kidding me right now? I just laugh. Wow. Like, really? Really? Mm. really? Mm. But what that did, um, it was with Spectrum. Um, and so what that did, two days after that, there was this unction that said, you know what, Ebony, this would be a good time for you to move to Georgia, because I've been wanting to go there. Mm. But I'm like, my kid's older. I'm like, I spoke to his dad, and he said, I think that would be good for him. I'm like, who are you? What have, what have, you, done? <laughs> what have you done with Mr. Alexander? Because what? And that was just the release. So within two months, wow. I moved to Georgia um, mm -hmm. and got a, another job with my job, mm -hmm. with my Spectrum job. And then I got another job in uh, at working at Rollins as a contractor in the finance department. Mm -hmm. And through that, they were able to help to pay for me to go back to school. And I said, if I'm going to do it, I have a, a good, my, my minor was in business. I can manage. I think I'm going to do that. And that's what made me switch from human resources to an MBA in management. It's crazy. <laughs> Just insane. Uh, where's the book? Because <laughs> this right here, I, I got so many like nuggets from that. And if y'all are on live, please feel free to ask questions. But one thing I got from it is you didn't choose to be comfortable. You didn't choose to be comfortable. And a lot of us, when we, when we experience disappointments, difficulties, we tend to be comfortable in the sense of, well, this is just my situation and I'm just going to have to just, just, just stay here. Yeah. But you chose and made the decision to be like, no, isn't this is not only for me, but this is for my son too. This is about setting Absolutely. up generational wealth. I got to figure out a way to get out of this. And that's right. God created a way for you to do that. And the fact that you ended up in a place <laughs> where they paid for your education, come on. And that's the power. That's the power of education. And I don't think a lot of people know that there are so many opportunities out there yeah. that can provide ways to fund your dream Absolutely. and your, and your dream. You might be thinking this small, but there's, there's bigger. Oh, yeah. When you started this conversation, you said your list was. A <laughs> this roof over my head and food and money for food. That's it. And look, and look at how your dream expanded yeah. because you chose not to be comfortable where you're at. Oh my gosh. This yeah. is just, 
this is so powerful. And I'm sure that everybody has questions and we have a couple more minutes, but I, my, I think one of my last questions is just, what is something you wish someone told you throughout your journey? Mm. If you were to kind of go back to when you were young in foster care and you see yourself now, what is something you wish someone told you when you were at that state? That's pretty heavy. <laughs> I wish someone told me that I could do anything that I put my mind to. Mm. I wish someone told me that thoughts become things. Mm. So one of the things that has, I believe, allowed all of this, these things, including closing on my first home a year ago here in Atlanta, Okay, like owning, like my name's on, like it's mine. It's or yours. It's because, idiot. Okay, it's because I envisioned it, and I believe that if I had known that, that thoughts become things. Like my thoughts would have changed, mm. and I may have reached where, not where I am right now, but my path could have been a little bit easier or different. But mm. at the same time, my path built the character in me to make me who I am now. Yes. So I don't regret it. Woo! Can we put hand claps in the and you did that. It, 20 years later. Because some over. people some people think that oh I'm too old to do this thing. Yeah. Where if you feel that unction to do it, just do it. There will be ways made for you to get to where you need to get to and thoughts become things yeah. and that alone just shows you the power of the mind oh, yes the power Absolutely. of manifestation I don't care what you're going through what it looks like where you started your mom and dad are not in your life yep it starts up here if you envision yourself being who you're called to be whether it's getting your MBA managing a company being a ceo being a lawyer whatever you put your mind to know right. that not only you can do it but that there will be people put in place and i believe sent by god okay yes divine inspiration divine people that will be able to speak to you and maybe this platform too is a wake-up call to be like hey write that vision down yeah don't stop it doesn't matter what it looks like here we have ebony who's a living breathing walking testimony because with the backstory that she has many people couldn't have gotten this far but to see you and the power of your story and your testimony that you shared in only a couple minutes <laughs> it, it it reignites uh, not only me but I'm sure everyone watching that they can do it too you can get your master's in business administration okay. whatever you set your mind to I don't care if if you have your associates now, go back to school. That's right. Go back and do it. Go back and do the thing that you've been called to do. So we have five more minutes left. Okay. With our talk. And so can you just talk about your village? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, you're in a sorority. Yes. And you have an amazing, just based on this story, you had an amazing village for you. So can you just talk about the power of a village? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I would not have been able to um, endure what I've endured without my village. And I would not have been able to remain sane without mm. my village, okay? So my bloodline, my biological, which was supposed to be a village that was, hand, that was made just for me to be in it, that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And so God gave me another one, a whole nother family. Mm. And um, in that, Wow. you know, encouragement in my, in my, um, my adoptive parents, my dad, he's from Senegal and he is the only man I've ever called dad that mm -hmm. I've ever known to be a father. Um, and he loves me like we have the same blood. Uh, my son has grandparents. Yeah. I don't have grandparents. My grandmother only knew one and she died when I was 10. So yeah. that provides him a sense of family mm -hmm. that I couldn't have otherwise. My 
godmother and my god sister, uh, Crystal Waterman, who is the basilisk or president of my chapter of Theta Sigma Sigma in the notable Northeastern region. Uh, she is um, my person and I met her where? In college that I never thought I was gonna get. Wow. And I met her there. And so her and now currently present day, my, my pastors, um, apostle, Darren Phillips and Apostle uh, Valerie Phillips, uh, my community of the church and every member. Mm -hmm. This is what allows me to stay afloat mm -hmm. and to um, continuously encourage me that, girl, you can do it. Woo! Yes, a little soft on it. Um, well, I just want to say that we are so proud of you for persevering for pushing through your circumstances and using your circumstances as a foundation. Well, God is a foundation, but also using your circumstances as a foundation to push through. And as your village, I wanna tell you, we love you. We appreciate you. We are so proud of you. And I wanna encourage everyone out there. So sur surround yourself with the village of people that will push you towards your purpose. Identify the ones that are not for you and let them go. Amen. Because they're, they're, they're not helping your progress. And identify the ones that are propelling you, pushing you towards your purpose. Don't take advantage of them, but That's love right. on them. They might tell you things you don't want to hear at the moment, but receive it, yeah. <laughs> use it, and push through. And so as we end, can you just let people know how they can get in touch with you, um, just about their career goals or anything that they may need? Absolutely. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn under Ebony King Alexander. I might be the only one in the world, so it should be easy to find. You can find me on Instagram at I'm just Eb, one word, I-M-J-U-S-T-E-B. Um, and feel free, you can email me at Ebony King Alexander at Gmail, and I would be more than happy to share my journey in more detail if that's what you'd like. Well, I don't know if you can see the comments on Facebook, but everybody loves you. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, again, so proud of you. And because you did it, I know that others can do it, too. Amen. And like I said, you're a testimony for so many people. And I'm just waiting for that book. I, I Hey, I, God. Okay. Hey, uh, just, fine. Just, just, I mean, because I know there's more. There's more to the story and we were only able to take a peek into it, but um, this inspired so many people. And so I just want to say that I love you. Love we you love you. Me. We appreciate you. And I want everybody out there to get ready to join us next month for the next installation of the Girl You Can Do It 2 series. Again, share this video with somebody that needs it. Encourage them. It doesn't matter how old, how young they need to know that they can do it too. So we love you guys and have an awesome, awesome night. Bye. <laughs>